Welcome to Data Science 1, Probability, the Gamma Distribution. So some things we're going to need to remember. We're going to need to remember the sample space, random variable, cumulative distribution function, sort of, probability density function, and the exponential distribution. So we're going to be weighting again. If you remember in the last video, we were looking at the exponential distribution, and we were waiting for our first occurrence to occur uh, of a Bernoulli outcome. Well, what if we wanted to have more than just a single outcome that we were interested in? So, for example, uh, bus maintenance or some other maintenance schedules, you often t have to go in for service after so many uh, specific uh, trips. It's not a matter of time because if it was time, you could be in the middle of a trip. So they make it uh, uh, after so many trips. All right, so suppose the inspection schedule for a bus is every 10th trip. And they just bring it in, look it over, check it out. And the average length of a trip is five hours. What would the distribution look like this? Well, if we think about it, it should be very, very low probability that it will take zero hours, unlike the exponential. Remember, we have to make 10 trips, okay? Uh, very low probability that it will take an extremely long time. We're pretty sure the bus is going to come back at some point. Uh, more than likely, it's going to take, or longer trips are going to be more common than shorter trips. Uh, so one actually has to complete the trip, and that's why you can only complete a trip so fast. So here's what the probability density function looks like, and you stare at that and you go, oh, where'd you get that one from? So anyway, there's lots of ways that you come up with this. So if you stare at this a little bit, you can see the exponential hiding in there. You can see this piece here is part of the exponential, and you can also see you have a beta and a 1 over beta hiding in here. And it turns out if alpha is equal to 1, this thing falls right into being a uh, exponential distribution. All right, so what's this gamma thing here? Well, this is the gamma function, uh, and that's where the name of the distribution comes from. Here, both alpha and beta are parameters of this distribution. If alpha is a positive integer, then this gamma of alpha is just alpha minus 1 factorial. Easy to calculate, might be a big number, but it's easy to calculate. Uh, otherwise, it's this integral. And because of this thing, the CDF can be really ugly. Uh, uh, for lots of reasons, the CDF can be really ugly. So we are going to omit it. Um, we're just using computer instead. Okay, but we can find other things. Uh, under our formulation here, uh, if we have a gamma, alpha, beta, this is how it would be written, x is distributed gamma, alpha, beta, then the mean uh, is given by this, and the variance is given by this. So the mean is alpha, beta, and the variance is alpha, beta squared. Super easy to deal with. All right, let's look at an example. Cricket's a very high-scoring game with players staying at bat a considerable amount of time. For each inning, there will be... Uh, overall, 10 ba batsmen must be dismissed for the ending to be over. Suppose that each batsman on the team are independent and it takes the time for them to be dismissed around 13.2 minutes. Okay, what is the expected length of play for an inning for one team? So notice that we have to see 10 of these things occur. It's more than just one. And it's absolutely clear if they're out or not. So here, alpha equals 10. Real easy to pick out because it's the number of times we're going to do this uh, or that we're looking for. Ooh, boy, this sounds sort of like a negative binomial geometric relationship here. So it's like an exponential is more like a geometric, and negative binomial is like this gamma, because we're looking for a specific number of outcomes before our experiment is over. Okay, so this corresponds to the number of batsmen that needs to be dismissed. Similar to the exponential distribution here, we can come up with beta equals 13.2. Now, if we use this information here, we're going to get that on average it will take alpha times beta 132 minutes to get all these batsmen out. And that would make sense, right? 10 people on average, 13.2, comes out about 132 minutes. Okay, but now we can use this to come up with probability. Okay, so suppose we're interested in the probability that an inning takes longer than 180 minutes. So this is what we're interested in. The probability X is greater than 180. Uh, let's see, a CDF goes the other direction. So if I do 1 minus this, here's the CDF. 
I can work with the CDF, which I can get a hold of. This might be harder to get a hold of. So since we're doing this complement trick, this allows us to be able to calculate this. So I have 1 minus f of 180, and then I have dot, 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 Mr. Computer here is going to give me this number 0 0.8722. So it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.8722 is going to give me 0 0.1278, which is our probability. So there's a 12% probability that the ending will take longer than 180 minutes. So it's not going to be real common to run that long if this was the situation. Okay, so how to use a computer for this? Well, if you're using R, which is a free software that we've been using in other videos in this module, you can use the P gamma function, plug in 180, plug in 10, plug in 1 over 13.2. Their formulation is a little bit different. If you're using Excel, you're going to use gamma dot dist, 180, 10, 1 over 13.2. And then you're going to have comma equals true because this is cumulative. And that will allow you to calculate these probabilities relatively easily. Okay, so here's the uh, summary of what we've done. Here's our PDF, CDF, we're just saying it's too ugly, we're going to use a computer. Uh, mean and variance, easy, alpha, beta, uh, sigma squared is our variance with alpha, beta squared. And here's our rough analogy here. Exponential is like a geometric experiment, right? You wait till the first outcome, first success here. But there's the number of failures until then. Here, this is just the time until we see it. And the gamma is like a negative binomial where you were interested in the rth success. And you're going to wait until that 10th uh, or rth success occurs, and you just measure the time until then versus looking at the number of failures. But otherwise, they're, they're similar ideas, and you should keep that in mind. But we're going to move on to the normal distribution in the next video. So see you there.